So listen, sad news for fans of the format. My 30-foot microphone cord was destroyed in a travel-related catastrophe. Godspeed to a real one. We'll miss you, 30-foot microphone cord, and you will never be replaced. Except by my new 36-foot long cord. Good morning, Hank. It's Tuesday. It just feels like so much is going on right now. Like, my hair looks like 2008 me because I, I haven't had time to get a haircut. Oh my god, when would you get here? Oh, I've been here the whole time. It's kind of a bit within the bit. Listen, did you know that as of today, the Awesome Coffee Club has K-Cups Backyard Compost? K-cups and five pound bags for all of your bulk office-y coffee needs. Tell your boss, tell your office procurement services, tell your friends and family who use K-cups. All right, let's uh, get a check on the weather. Oh, you know, I really am doing okay. I'm just kind of exhausted and not primarily in the physical sense, you know? Hey, so listen, bud, that's not actually the weather. You've just described the conditions of your internal atmosphere, and the weather is actually the conditions of the external atmosphere. Oh, yeah, no, it's, uh, it's, it's cloudy. Now that was a great weather report. I'm super proud. By the way, I'm drinking awesome coffee right now. It's so good. Speaking of awesome coffee, I sometimes struggle to feel any emotion like purely or simply, if that makes sense. Like whenever something good happens, like passing $2 million raised by the Awesome Socks and Coffee Club, for example, I feel good, but then there's like this hint of dread that goes along with it, like something terrible is about to happen, like the universe is about to even the score by creating some kind of personal or societal disaster that I will have to endure. I wonder if anybody else experiences this or if it's like just a me thing. It could just be a me thing. But there's also this related phenomenon where I get really bad news and I tend to deny or minimize it or else figure there must be a way out of the bad news. And that is also an inability to feel something purely or directly, right? I guess what I'm trying to say is that for me, emotions just tend to be muddled and multitudinous and above all complex. Hey, Doom, I think ultimately that's why I love sports so much. Sometimes I just need to feel in a straightforward and uncomplicated manner. Like when I saw AFC Wimbledon get promoted to the third tier of English football at Wembley with my dad and my friends and 60,000 other people, I did not feel happiness with a side order of dread. I felt pure, simple joy. And then lately, every Saturday, when AFC Wimbledon score first and go 1-0 up, only to lose 2-1, which they've done literally more often in the last three seasons than any other team in professional soccer, I don't feel like sadness, but with a little bit of hope. I, I, I just feel the sadness. It's, it's super pure. It's not pleasant, but God, it's simple. I mean, like a couple weeks ago, I flew across an ocean with my kid to see the football team I love not only lose a football match to the worst team in the league, but also fail to register a single shot on target. And yet, it was kind of wondrous. I was with people whose love is oriented in the same direction as mine. The emotions, while miserable, were at least straightforward. And most importantly, they were shared. You know, like usually when you go about your day, everyone you encounter is having a different day. But at an AFC Wimbledon game after an infuriating loss, most of us were having the same day. Those feelings of frustration and disappointment are certainly unpleasant despite their simplicity, but they are less unpleasant when you're not so lonely in them. Hank, I'll see you on Friday.